Hi there everyone, today we are talking about the modern day way of extracting chlorine. The method we are going to see, we have seen already in this course. You should be very familiar with it. This is just a slightly new way of using it. So last time we went into a fair bit of detail on the LeBlanc process, um, a process that we saw, as you can see in the pictures up here on the screen, uh, was very damaging. Not only was it very damaging, the atom economy of it was very, very low. So a lot of materials were being wasted. It had a very low efficiency. And the problems of the LeBlanc process had to be solved by a whole new process. They had to start from scratch. And this new way was useful for both chlorine and still useful for alkalis as well. So the chloralkali industry was still remained very much intertwined here. One of the last improvements that was actually made to the LeBlanc process was by Henry Deacon, which we discussed last lesson. Now, Henry Deacon will come up again because part of his reaction is reversible. And therefore, later on in this unit, we do need to talk about reversible reactions. That's a cheeky heads up for later. Get your reversible reactions heads on. At the bottom of the screen on the left hand side you can see a textbook page reference. Later on I will show you which textbook that links to. So how was the problem solved? The problem was solved using a technique which students famously don't get on with particularly well. Um, it's a technique that we've used in the lab before and we started the unit by reminding ourselves how this process worked as you've talked about it already at GCSE level. The solution was electrolysis. Now the basics of electrolysis we've discussed at length before. For my students I will share on Edmodo our previous resources based on electrolysis so you can use this just to refresh your memory on how it works. For those of you who might have found this channel and I don't teach you, um, these resources I will pop on my TES page which is freely accessible and everything that I'm putting up at the minute is absolutely free. So the small scale. Small scale electrolysis is exactly the same as what we've been talking about since GCSE. Now at GCSE you might have not seen the diagram this way around, it might have been the other way around, um, but this is just a cheeky little way of capturing the gases that comes off the electrolysis. So the inputs that we've got here um, is seawater, rock salt or brine, any of those are absolutely fine. The rock salt obviously has got a lot of salt in, so you grind that up, you make it into a liquid. Sea water, again, you just take it straight from the sea, and brine is just salty water, okay? So it's really easy to get hold of that stuff, doesn't require much processing at all, and they're pretty renewable in terms of resources. Readily accessible, plentiful, and very renewable. So in terms of green chemistry there, we're already looking really good. Now you can see on the diagram a few little bits of equipment that we should have seen before. Uh, we've got a power source there, we've got our electrodes there, probably unreactive ones, something like graphite, uh, which obviously is just carbon. Um, here we have got two upturned test tubes or boiling tubes. They've been filled with an electrolyte solution and when the bubbles are created, whether they be hydrogen, chlorine, uh, oxygen, whatever, they are formed around that electrode, the gas bubbles rise up to the top and displace the solution out so you collect the gas there. If you had let's say a measuring cylinder there or some sort of gas syringe you could actually measure the volume over a period of time. And don't forget what is formed at each electrode very much depends on what the solution is that you are electrolyzing. Here are the rules for this that we've talked about earlier in this unit. Okay, so if that's the small scale that's very, very easy to do, that we can do, um, what is the industrial scale? Because the small scale, you can see on that diagram, it's potentially only going to make maybe 10 centimetre cubed of your chlorine gas. In industry, we need significantly more than that. Now, on the industrial scale, there are three different technologies that are most prominently used. There is something called the membrane cell process, the mercury cell process and the diaphragm cell process. What you need to do is have a look at the links that can be accessed by clicking the blue writing which has been hyperlinked to the website and for each one you just need a very brief description of how it works. If you want to go above and beyond you are very welcome to add diagrams, um, 
comparing this to the small scale synthesis, but that would be going above and beyond. So if you want a challenge and you fancy doing that, you should go for that. But all you actually need for your notes is a very quick summary of each of these processes. Following on from that, once the chlorine has been made via electrolysis, you have got to transport it to wherever it needs to be and store it until it can be used. The transportation and storing of chlorine is somewhat tricky. First off, chlorine is toxic because it is a halogen and it is a gas. So gases are not easy to transfer. Liquids, great, you just pour it. Solids, you chuck it in a van, off you go. Gases are somewhat more hazardous and tricky to store and transport. So what you need to do here is using page 173 and 175 of our A-level textbook, you need to have a read through of that information and just create a very short report explaining what measures factories and industry need to take in order to store and transport chlorine safely. Which textbook do I mean? Um, this one. So for my students, this is our textbook that we always have anyway. Um, some of you may have a copy of this at home. Others of you might not. Um, this is accessible through our school's Caboodle account. So please do try your best to get logged on there. If you are having issues, do get in touch. For those of you who have never used Caboodle before, uh, again, if you are from our school, get in touch and I can get you the details for that. If you are not, um, Caboodle is a digital version of the textbook. Um, previously, they charged a subscription fee for this service. However, due to the COVID crisis, they are offering a free service until September. That can be accessed very easily just by searching for Caboodle on any search engine you like. Uh, there's a link there, which I'll try and get linked into this video as well. If, you, if I can't get it working, um, I'll put it in the description for this video as well. Okay, so specification references, what have we done? We have got the explanation of how we get the halogens from the sea. We've now done chlorine, bromine and iodine. But also with this one, we've referred back to electrolysis. Therefore, this specification reference uh, redox C. Um, we have talked about those techniques again and some higher level versions of them as well. So what do you need to do? What you need to do is remind yourself of the basics of how electrolysis works by referring back to the lessons from the start of this unit. You need to make brief notes of how it is used on the industrial scale by using the links for the Eurochlor website. I do not expect these notes to be this big. I do not expect them to be the size of War and Peace. Uh, they just need to be brief summaries of how they work. And if you fancy a bit of an extra challenge, how about adding the diagram and comparing it to simple electrolysis and maybe evaluating which one you think is actually best. Following on from that, a short piece of writing using the textbook to explain how industry can store and transport chlorine safely and the issues they faced in doing this. That is it for now, girls, boys and others. For my students, I will put all that as an assignment on Edmodo so you don't have to keep referring back to the video to remember what you need to do and why, including any links that you need. And what we will do is review that work in our next live webinar. That is it for now, ladies, gents, girls, boys and others. I hope you are keeping well. I hope you are staying alert and looking after each other, okay? Been lovely chatting to you, as always.